Hello my friend and thank you for joining me in, in how to make a perfect drift machine or a drift car in automation game so you can drive it in your beam ng dot drive game uh, it's it's simple it's not difficult at all if you follow these instructions and it's always fun to smoke those tires and to have a perfectly perfectly executed slide around every single corner in beam ng dot drive on every single map which is absolutely amazing so my friend you in this video you will be watching step by step of how to create an all-wheel drive drift machine not three wheel drive because i've always said this to uh, to everyone uh, i always love all wheel drive machine drift machines in beam ng dot drive especially the ones that i create in automation game because with all wheel drive you will have more controllable drifts you will have amazing moves and you can put very very powerful engines and control them perfectly safe perfectly fun in every single way in mbmg.drive unlike real drive real drive cars that are made in automation game uh, especially drift cars that are made in automation game and exported to mbmg.drive these cars are very difficult to drive yes you can make one you can make a perfect one and you can slide it on every single corner but it will be it will have you will have slow drift uh, drift slide you will have uncontrollable drift and it's like 90 percent of the times you will spin out and crash because it's very very difficult to make a very very amazing rear wheel drive drift machine in automation game and drive it in bmg.drive i'm not saying it's impossible it's it's possible you can make that but it's very difficult and it will require tons of attention to the suspension to the tires the gearbox so just go with all-wheel drive have fun always smoke those four tires and put on a very very amazing show all right so the first step is of course choosing your production year well my friend if you if you are building a drift machine and if you want to get like the best technology and the best results out of every single part in your car just go with 20 2020 production unit uh, production year because you will get the best results out of each part like the, the, the brakes the the tires the gearbox everything will be like Top notch. If, even on its rubbish settings, you will have the top notch technology, and that's very good. The second step, of course, is to choose what kind of body yeah, for your creation. Well, my friend, you can absolutely drift anything, anything in BMG.drive as long as you make it uh, perfect, as perfect as possible in automation game. Anything you can, you can drift a van, an SUV, a sedan, a pickup, anything. But Pay close attention because not every single car is driftable because lately on the Steam Workshop there are some crazy uh, like modded bodies, get a car bot like, like this one, this is like a moped, this is the lawn mower, this is, I don't know, some sort of um, an indie car or something or NASCAR or something like this. So yeah, these cars are of course with open wheels. You will have tons of problems with the suspension, with the weight distribution, the way they were created, how the chassis is working. It's, it's not really ideal. Yes, you can make those cars to drift, and I really want to see that. And I will try to make that in the future, but if you want to, to make it simple and just have fun, smoke those four tires as quickly as possible, just choose any regular body from automation game. All right, so we have chosen our body. As you can see, we are, I've chosen the Gladiator 1000, a perfect drifting machine that I will be showing you in a moment. Moving on, now we have to create this chassis. This is step three. Uh, and my friend, in automation game, any chassis will work. Don't worry about it. If you, if you are planning on making like an affordable drift car, well, you can go with ladder or monocoque with regular steel or maybe galvanized. These things are cheap to make and they won't actually cost that much and they won't actually take that much time if, if you do care about production. Like for example, if you are drifting, if you are making like a, a, a mass a mass produced uh, drift car, yes, you need to pay, pay close attention to, to the price, to the production units and so on. But if you are just making it for fun, well, go with the best possible. Uh, I in the Gladiator in, in the Gladiator 1000 I tried to go both ways, which is make make a production car and make it uh, you know as perfect as possible you know with with 
very very great materials as you can see i went with carbon fiber body or panels for the body monocoque chassis type made entirely from carbon fiber which is like the lightest and the best uh, front longitudinal engine placement also this goes for the engine placement uh, both of them will not affect how the car will drift because if you choose if you chose the year 2020 you will get all-wheel drive on both platforms on both uh, engine pla placement platforms without any problem you will get all-wheel drive on both of them so it's up to you if you want to go with like if you are creating a hatchback uh, front load transverse is perfect if you are creating like a muscle car or a long a pickup truck or a, or a ute or something or a sedan you can choose longitudinal it will work either way uh, front suspension also it will not affect how the car will drift it will only affect like the ride height or how the car will feel when it comes to cornering but for drifting well choose the best i mean that, that's my uh, that's my op that's my only option for you Just go with the best like double wishbone for sedans uh, pickup trucks um, let's see what else uh, yeah, vans, these things will work. McPherson strut for like, for example, for, for hatchbacks, small cars. Yes, these are perfect for them because they are more compact. Coils and leaves. Yes, you can choose these, but you can't, you will, you can't tune the camber because there's no camber settings on both of these, the leaves and the coils. So, yes, camber is very important, important in drift cars. So, we we'll just go with double or McPherson. It's up to you. The rear suspension, the same goes, no leaves and no coils because you won't, you can't control the, or you can't tune the camber on those on the rear suspension, which is not really perfect or ideal for a drift car. But you can't, you can't make a drift car. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible. You can, and I've tried it, and I made some drift cars with leaves and coils before. But for more tunability, just go with push rods, multi-link, or double wishbone, or semi trailing arms. Or even what what what's that other option? They call it uh, yes, semi-trailing arms. And there is actually another option, which is yeah, there is this there is another option here. If you if you are building a front-wheel drive car, you will get another option. Here. I I totally forgot about it. So yeah, all these options you can tune the camber. Now the quality. Well, of course, the better quality, the better chassis you will have. So. Even if you go with 0 or minus 10 or minus 15, it will work. It will not affect uh, the car in BMNG.Drive because it's not really connected in BMNG.Drive. It's, it's, it the quality slide is for, for example, how good the car is in automation game. But it will not affect it in BMNG.Drive uh, on, on the chassis alone. Moving on. Now the engine. How much horsepower you want to have. Well, my friend... Um, my my advice to you is if you are creating a natural aspirated engine go with 500 horsepower and and more and plus so you can control very very nice ex nicely executed drift moves around every single corner less than 500 horsepower you'll be struggling for torque and you will ha you, you need to uh, to you, you need to have like a quick shifting and 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 a short short gear so you can get the torque immediately on every single corner but with, uh, with a powerful engine, you can put long gears so you can have more speed on, on the tires so you can control the car evenly, which is very, very awesome when you are filming your car and uh, creating a cinematic view. Uh, as you can see, what you are seeing here, this is the engine in the Gladiator 1000, which is a 7-liter V8 engine. Well, my friend, some of you will say a 7-liter V8 engine doesn't need twin turbos. It can make... Uh, a thousand horsepower on natural aspirated easy and that's true but it will it won't make the torque the torque will be low as you can see i've went with twin turbochargers on a seven liter v8 and i'm making only 1000 horsepower and yes i can make much 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 more horsepower than this but i kept it safe because uh this way the car will be super controllable and super awesome to drive a thousand horsepower is more than enough to control uh, a drift machine around a sim a every single corner so start from 500 all the way to maximum a thousand if you want to if you want to go above a thousand you can and you can drift this car but it will it will be you will to require extra attention so you don't crash it because it will accelerate really hard and you need to be really careful 
so it's up to you start from 500 go all the way to a thousand uh, choose whatever engine you want any engine will, will work as long as you have great amount of torque you need torque torque is your friend because when you are sliding on every single corner sometimes you don't want to push the throttle 100 percent to spin the tires just by, by by balancing the car balancing the throttle will well, i mean you and using the torque will make every single slide i mean perfect perfect and beautiful to look at so go with a torquey engine i mean if you are building an inline four and line five and line six uh, just go with a turbo, it will give you all the boost you want, on all the torque you want to drift your car. Uh, if you are building a V engine like a V8, a V10 or a V12, you have the torque, you have it on natural aspirated, it's, it's alright, it's very good. But if you want your car to be extra perfect, turbocharge everything, turbocharge everything. Because you will have the edge on other cars which is the torque, which, uh, which would give you more control. Choose any technology you want, any pistons you want. It's up to you. This is this is all uh, your own tune, my friend. As you can see, I went with VVL, VVT. The engine is making 21% of uh, fuel efficiency, which is very very awesome for a thousand horsepower, seven liter V8. Uh, I'm not saying it's perfect. I mean, I just right now, right now, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing lots of things that I need to actually tweak it, like for example the RPM and actually the rpm is good because i i think yeah i because i didn't go with titanium i kept it regular cheap which is forged plus four quality so yeah i think it's good yeah yeah i i can make it like extra efficient by dropping the uh the fuel mixture if i want to as you can see i went with super 98 no race and take i went with the performance one so it's a pretty high performance engine not a racing engine this is a high performance engine and yes i'm using a catalytic converters and i'm using also straight through mufflers on the gladiator 1000 so this thing has mufflers and this thing is like clean it has a clean emissions as you can see 64 points only which is uh, very very clean and very cool Moving on, as you can see, this is the final result for the engine, 1000 horsepower and 816.5 pound-feet of torque. Uh, and also, what you need to pay attention to is throttle response. You need, you need great throttle response. Uh, because if your engine is lazy, because if your engine is very, very lazy to get up, to get up with the RPM, to get up with the speed with the rpm you will have a little bit of a little a little problem sliding your car and shifting it because when your engine is like super quick to 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 rev itself to the max rpm you, your, your your drift will be super super controllable because your engine is working with you but if your engine is super lazy and for example running on carburetors or if the engine is choked by uh, like tiny uh, a single throttle body or something like this yes you will have some tiny bit of issues but it's up to you my friend this is your own career this is your own creation and these are my advices ad advices to you which is go with a high high responsive engine 500 plus all the way to a thousand horsepower with a great torque moving on uh, let's let me fire it up just to, for the fun Gladiator 1000 Heart Oh yes, I just remembered also if you are creating a turbocharged engine, please make sure your 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 turbocharger uh, can can give you all the boost as low as possible. Like look at this, the Gladiator 1000 the, the boost will kick in at 3000 RPM. Which is perfect. If you can go, if you can go lower, like if you can go like 2,500 RPM or even 2,000 RPM, it will be even even better because the the boost and the and the torque will will get on very very quickly. I mean, very very quickly when the when the engine is running. You don't need to push the the RPM really high to get the to get all the power and all the torque. And this is perfect. So make sure if you are building a turbocharged engine for your drift car to make the turbo as efficient as possible or as quickly to get on the boost as possible. Don't make a laggy engine. A laggy engine will be super, super, 
I mean, annoying to drift with it. I've I've seen some creations by the viewer, and I've made some mistakes in the past with with like, for example, creating a, an unli an inline five or an inline four drift car with a big turbo on it. I you put your foot hard down on the throttle, the, the engine is waiting and waiting and waiting, and then the boost will come on, and then the slide is just wrong. Uh, the tires are extra grippy, so yeah, you will have tons of problems. Just make you sure your engine is as good as it can be moving on all right then so the next step uh, the next step is of course choosing your uh, your drive type of course as i've as i've mentioned before we are we are building an, an all-wheel drive drift machine so yes longitudinal all-wheel drive or if you are building a transverse engine placement it, it will give you an option transverse all-wheel drive because the year is the production year is 2020 now the gearbox well my friends stay away from automatic and advanced automatic these two options are the worst for drift cars not only in gaming also in real life i mean no one drifts with an automatic gearbox that's that's hideous uh, i'm talking about regular automatic i'm not talking about dual clutch or i don't know what kind of crazy uh, technologies these days have like i don't know tetronic or whatever so yes in, in automation game yeah, in automation games, stay away from automatic and advanced automatic in a drift uh, a drift category. No, that's not perfect. If you are building, if you are building an affordable drift car in automation game, yes, you can go with a manual, but you will be facing a little problem in BMW.Drive, which is shifting time. The uh, the uh, because of course you are shifting it manual using your keyboard, your controller, your your steering wheel, whatever you are using to play BMW.Drive. Uh, the shifting time between years is a little bit slow. The computer or the CPU or whatever the AI is using, uh, you know, that, that is that's job to shift gears is very very slow. I mean, you, you go from second, th third, go from third, fourth, something like there's a gap, with the, and this gap will give you some problems around corners. If if you can if you can learn when to shift gears, if your car has like for example long gears and very great horsepower. You, you you can you can dodge this bullet you can dodge this problem because you have long gears you will stick it in a single gear and job done there is not much shifting but if you want to shift gears quickly manual is not really your option here it's not really your perfect option your perfect option if you have if you are building like a drift car with shiftings if you want to shift it down and up around every single corner just to control your your drift angle and to keep it balanced uh, make sure you choose sequential or dual clutch. Sequential is very quick, I and mean, the the reaction time or the the shifting time is very very superb for uh, shifting when you are cornering. It will it will not be it will not delay at all, which is perfect. Dual clutch is even better because it's even it's much more quicker than the sequential. And if you want to relax, just put it in automatic, and job done. So uh, dual clutch it's like an automatic gearbox, and uh, sequential at the same time which is I mean perfect in every single way now ratios this is the this, you can decide this uh, uh, when, when, like up, it's up to your horsepower it's really up to your horsepower if you have like 500 600 horsepower you can go with a six speed that's more ideal uh, if you are if you're going like with a 700 and plus horsepower go with a seven speed this way you will have you can get the uh, the final drive as perfect as possible so you can tune the wheel spin because wheel spin is your friend here this is not your enemy this is your friend here uh, especially on the first and the second gear those are the most important things because you can go with as minimum as possible wheel spin but if you have like a low low horsepower engine you will struggle you will struggle really uh, to get those wheels spinning because of your gearing but uh, if you have a high horsepower engine like this one, like the Gladiator, which is a thousand horsepower, putting long gears on it will be amazing because you don't have to shift that much and you will get the, the tires to spin in a fast, in a, in a quick speed, in a fast speed. Uh, and that should give you more amazing, amazing core, like cornering and drift moves, especially when you are filming in a cinematic way. And now the final drive, make sure your second gear May if on, on an all-wheel drive car, all-wheel drive the drift machine, make sure your second gear like cannot go above 
20-25% wheel spin, the second gear. And all the rest of the gears, three, third, fourth, fifth, something like this, all of these things are on zeros. Like with, with a 700 horsepower and plus, this ratios will be perfect so you can have fun. Uh, 500 up, up to 650 for example yeah make sure your second uh, your second gear ha you know has at least 30 25 30 percent will spin the second gear the first speed the first gear well you can go 100 percent you can go 90 percent it's up to you the first gear it's not really important you have to spin the tires either way but the second gear is what what decides this is the gear that decides uh, where your car is sticking on the road or keeps on drifting that so you have to focus on your second gear uh, so you, you, you need to tune your gearbox using the the final drive and the spacing these two will decide uh, how much wheel spin on each single gear and uh, of course how much uh, how much time your car takes from 0 to 100 as you can see the gladiator on, on these settings uh, is getting from from 0 to 100 in 2.3 seconds now the second, the, third, the the next thing, which is your differential. Well, you need you need a limited slip differential. So go with geared only, or limit electronic limited slip differential. These two options only, geared or electronic. Never ever ever choose vicious. This is rubbish. This is like an open differential uh, in in, in BMG.Drive. It's useless. It's rubbish. Never choose it. The same goes for automatic. The same goes for open. Uh, manual. It can work, but you need to lock it manually. You need to press a button in, in BeamNG.Drive to lock it. And that's hideous. Never, also, don't choose it. Just stick to gear, geared and electronic. That, those are your best two options. Power distribution. Always. Remember this. On an, on an all-wheel drive drift machine, always, always, always 50-50 power distribution don't 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 look at the with the with the weight distribution don't look at anything don't look at the weight don't look at the weight distribution nothing set it to 50 50 power distribution on your drift car this way your car will have extremely balanced drift moves you won't spin out you won't crash this way your car is very very safe this way the power goes to the front wheels and the rear wheels at the same rate which is perfect uh, the quality, well, it's up to you, my friend. Higher quality, it will give you better gear, better gearing, better quality, better reliability. Well, etc. You know, for production. And sometimes, sometimes, if if you are pushing the quality really high, you will get lower zero to hundred time. Now, the tires. Now, this is a very, very, very important bit because if you have your car has like, for example, five hundred horsepower, six hundred, go with medium compound tires. Medium. That's they can grip, but they can also lose grip quickly. Uh, but if you are, if you have like a 600 horsepower, 500 horsepower engine, never go with sport compound. These tires are super grippy on 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 a 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower engine. They will give you problems. You can't slide that car easily. But if you have like a thousand horsepower engine. 700, 800 horsepower, 900 horsepower, sport compound is your friend. But never, ever, ever go with semi-slick tires. These things are just grippy, 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 no drift at all. Hard long life, hard long life tires, they are good for like 400 horsepower. Uh, drift cars, they can work, they can lose grip quickly, but they won't give you that, that control. Your car will slide and keep, keeps on sliding to the wall. And that's not ideal. Now, the tire width. This is determined by not not the looks of the car, of course. You need to make sure your car looks like perfect in every single way. But uh, this is determined by the steering. You need because you are building a drift car. You you need some sort of oversteer, not super oversteer. I mean safe oversteer. So make sure your steering and your suspension tune is 100% sportiness. And make sure your line is like this, the yellow line. Focus on the yellow line, my friend. The yellow line should be going like the, like this all the way to the top and gen, then dropping down. If your, if your yellow line is going all the way to the top and shooting up, remember, 
shooting up that's no 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 that's a big no no because if your yellow line is shooting up that means your car is oversteering at even at low speeds and that's not safe at all and you can't drift it you the car will just will just spin out constantly on even on, on 20 kilometers per hour and that's not cool so make sure your suspension and your steering like for example your tires and your suspension these two things like the width the camber the everything else this is what do what determine your uh, your yellow line or your sportiness percentage and yeah make sure it's 100 percent on sportiness and yeah try to try also to get the highest amount of g as possible on 100 percent sportiness so go as high as possible on the g and as high as possible on the sportiness yeah and forget about drivability no one cares about it and uh, let's see what else material no one cares uh, these things like the rim the tire these things are it's up to you the quality it's up to you where well, the brakes are also up to you well i always, I always try to go with zero percent brake fadeness but since since this is an old option from the old automation version apparently there is an 0.1 percent all right 50 that solved it brake face brake base or the brake balance make sure your brakes are balanced as possible like for example look at those two things when you are adjusting the brake base as long as they are in the green that means your brake base is perfect as long as these two on the left are in the red that means your brake base is rubbish so yeah they are perfect on on this on this degree which is perfect um, pad type make sure you don't have any any kind of brake fadeness because well you don't want to, your brakes to fade moving on downforce well my friend make sure your car on, if, you're, if you are building a high speed drift machine like the Gladiator, make sure your car is stable at high speed. For example, this Gladiator is extremely stable because look at the steering. Also, the yellow line here. Uh, if you if you are adjusting the if you if you have some sort of downforce fixtures like a front lip like this, and a rear rear mounted like uh, a spoiler lip like this, for example, or a diffuser or something, make sure. This yellow line also goes all the way to the top and curve and drop. If you if your yellow line here is shooting up, that means your car will spin out at high speeds, and that's not ideal. Whatever, whatever you are adjusting here, make sure your your yellow line is just dropping. If it's dropping, it's perfect. If it's shooting up, just run away. Uh, let's see what else seats. It's up to you. Uh, I've chosen sport compound sport interior with two seats premium Entertainment system that means the car is is fun to drive. It's comfortable to drive It's not really harsh to drive. Of course if you are building a, a harsh or a, a fully on racing drift racing car Well, you can go with a single seat. No entertainment. It's up to you power steering always go with electronic variable because it will work perfectly uh, because hydraulic is heavy because of the hydraulic pump the hydraulic reservoir and all this and all this nonsense electronic variable electric variable works perfectly traction aids well you you can go with uh, at least abs because abs is is very very important when you when you want to slow down immediately and you, and you don't want your your wheels to lock yeah that that should give you an extra edge as you can see because I, I have adjusted the front lip I added extra downforce on the new version of this car uh, the look at this the steering is now not 100% so I need to fix that uh, let's see electronic variable safety it's up to you I went with basic tens it's up to you if you want to build a car with no safety equipments or with a safety equipment it's up to you the springs, well, my friend, it's, it, this is also up to you, but I always like to choose standard or progressive. You know, normal springs, cheap, lightweight, and good, reliable. Hydro, hydromatic, that's what I call it. I don't care what what this is, what this is written. Hydromatic, this is like for very very high end, comfortable machines like Rolls Royces and Bentleys. Uh, air suspension is good, is very very good actually, but it will make the car heavier because you need an air pump and air reservoir and all these piping and all this nonsense. Active active sport is these are heavy and expensive springs. They will give you great great uh, results in automation game, but but they won't actually affect anything in, in Beam and Drive. So 
yeah, just go with progressive or standard. They will they will be perfect. Uh, semi-active dampers, I always choose these because they are perfect. Sway bars, it's up to you. Passive sway bars, they will be much lighter, much cheaper. Active sway bars, they will be a little bit extra expensive, as you can see, and a little extra heavy. So, and they will give you great results in automation game, not in beamedge.drive. So, yeah. Uh, if, you are, if you are building a drift car, these these the sway bars won't affect anything. But if you are building an off-road machine, machine, yeah, it, it will affect. But I'm not gonna talk about it because we are not building an off-road machine. Sometimes it's it, it can it can be a challenge to get 100% uh, here. But 99.9 .9 is as good as 100%. So don't freak out. Uh, let's see what else. Make sure if you, if you want to make your car stable, this is like a quick tip. Uh, make sure if you want your car to be stable at high speed, make sure you have like uh, more than more than minus one one degree of front camber. Make sure your car has more than uh, minus one degree on the front camber and like very very thick uh, sway front sway bar. Don't don't, don't care about the sway uh, rear one. I'm, I'm talking about the front one. If you want your car to be stable with high speeds, go with a very go go with a thick front sway bar and uh, a little bit extra negative camber this way your car is much stable also make sure your dampers this is the damper for, for when your car goes over a bump make sure those two lines are overlapping they are on top of each other so this is the front suspension this is the rear suspension they will go on the bump and they will then the car will be stable this way when they are when they are overlapping on it on top of each other this way your car is much more controllable over bumps and also make sure your roll, roll angle is low don't don't make it high like more than three more than three degrees it will be it will be a little bit extra difficult to, to, to drift the car so less than three degrees of roll angle is perfect and that's it that's pretty much it my friend this is how you create a drift car in automation game so you can have fun with it in beam and g.drive so let's go, let's move on to BeamNG.Drive and see how the Gladiator will perform. Alright, so we are back in BeamNG.Drive with our brand new Gladiator 1000, the updated version with of course with the wipers, the uh, the new tail lights because I don't know, for us for some reason the, the old ones uh, has disappeared. But the suspension, everything else is still pretty much the same. The gear ratios, I don't know, we have tweaked them a little bit and the of course the front uh, Lip, yes, we have tweaked that as well when I was making it in the in you know when I was up upgrading it in in automation game, but it's still pretty much the same car, uh, same engine, same everything. So as you can see, we are on the automation map. So what I'm gonna do right now is start uh, and show you how this thing can drift. It's really really simple, and uh, it's not scary at all. So let's have fun. Putting it, it, putting it always in manual. Handbrake is your friend always, remember that. Absolutely perfect. Very stable. The new aerodynamic settings are much, much better. So yes, sometimes you can overcook it. Sometimes you can, you can, uh, you can make it lazy. It's up to you, my friend. It's up to your drifting style. Sometimes I go crazy. Sometimes I take precaution. Precautions. It's up to. It's up to the mood and if I'm scared or not of crashing it. Like before I started recording I did some warm-up laps. 
and I was getting it hard but I don't know for some reasons I'm, I'm just being careful as you can see it's perfectly balanced it's amazing and yes I think go with a go with a 1000 horsepower engine it's much better so that's pretty much it my friend I really hope that you enjoyed this t tutorial of how to make your um, uh, perfect drift car in automation game and how to, to of course to test it in beam and drive of course you can test this uh, at your, your drift machine on any map not only the automation test track you can, you can go to a hill climb or a city course or something and drift your car on every every single corner and have fun always with it i've made some crazy cars before if you want to check them out the link right here if you want to check my previous drift videos with the gladiator 1000 plus uh, other cars that i created other sedans and other pickup trucks that i created and as always don't forget to hit that thumbs up get subscribed share the video if you want to share it and don't forget to share your thoughts with me about your this creation about uh, if you have any question or something in the comment section below or if you want, of course, to chat with me, uh, the link in the description below for my uh, for my Discord. If you want, of course, to chat with me or ask anyone on the channel, or if you want to participate in future challenges or in the current challenge, if you want to participate in it, all this in the in the description below. So, my friend, if you like this car, if you like the Gladiator 1000, and if you want to have it in your Beam and Drive game, the link in the description below for my for if you want to download it on my Patreon page plus other crazy cars that I've created in the past plus other crazy replicas and other crazy cre creations and by download by downloading those cars you will be supporting the channel and I will be giving you my biggest thanks and a special thank you note on my next video as always thank you so much for watching and happy new year happy 2019 for everyone thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now my friends